Hi friends! If you want to check out what my top eyeshadow picks are for 2019, then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. One of my favorite highly anticipated videos to do. You know how I love eyeshadow. It was hard to choose because I felt I had several favorites throughout the year, but these are my standout picks that I will use year after year after year. And I just think one of said brand's best pieces of work. So, oh, let me let me get all the palettes here. Hold on. Let's start with Juvia's Place. Juvia's Place had a lot of palettes in 2019. I didn't buy all of them, but I bought the ones that were stand out to me. And these two definitely stole my heart from the get-go in terms of color story and just overall presentation. We're talking the Nubian 3 Coral as well as as the tribe by Juvia's Place. I recently reviewed the Nomad, which kind of reminds me of the tribe and I think a really great supplement to it. There was just something so beautifully earthy and vibrant with this palette all at the same time. The fact that you had even amounts of mattes and shimmers, dare I say metallics, and this duochrome shade, it's like so beautiful. And I think probably a dupe for one of Pat's palettes, one of Pat's shades, Galactic Gold in the Galactic Gold Star Wars palette. This here is like a duochrome type of situation I love. So this was stand out for me. I love the looks that I created with this palette when I reviewed it. And Nubian 3 Coral, I mean, who would have thought that we needed light blue gray with the coral palette? I love how they put these shades in here. I think it just adds a little bit of a very different upon seeing it, but I think it works. It works beautifully well. You don't necessarily have to pair the blues with the bronzes or the corals. If you choose to do so though, you're gonna get a beautiful look. I wanted to say actually, this shade here reminds me of one of the bronze shades in the newer Fenty palettes where I think this is a much better bronze overall. So if you already have this palette and you were thinking about getting the Fenty ones, you don't need it, just stick with this palette. I love the mattes in here. I thought these were a little more punchier than usual Juvia's Place matte formula. This color is so pretty. It's like so unexpected. Like I didn't know that I needed that in this palette, but it works out. And of course this gray periwinkle shade, you can't get enough, simply love it. Those were definitely stand out for me from Juvia's Place. ColourPop. <laughs> ColourPop releases palette after palette after palette after palette. And there was a day where I wanted to buy California Love. And I was like, Alicia, just don't do it. Don't do it. Because once you start, it's so hard to stop. They're $12 each, great deal, but the $12 keeps adding up. And especially when ColourPop is releasing a new eyeshadow palette every two to three weeks, I mean, over the course of a year, that gets expensive. So I thought the two standout palettes for me in 2019 were their Sweet Talk palette and the I Love Sada E collab through my eyes. The Sweet Talk palette was very special for ColourPop as it was the palette to premiere their pressed glitter formula as well as have a Super Shock shadow formula in a palette. Usually the Super Shock shadows are sold individually in those pots, but they finally put one here in a palette. And it's so nice to have uh, accessible with that. It dried out a little bit on me, unfortunately. The glitters dried out a little on me as well. I mean, you can still get something from there. I will definitely be careful because Remember, glitters are not eye safe, so proceed with caution. But I loved this arrangement of color, like with the peaches and the corals and the browns. I thought overall this was a very solid palette and color story. And with the different textures in here, I love the looks that I created with this palette. The Through My Eyes, I'm not crazy about the packaging, but the shades in here, I thought this was so well curated because you see the shades initially and you're like, whoa. But immediately you see the different looks you can do. Immediately. You see that you have the mustard orange story, you got your emerald story, you got more of a plummy story going on here. You could even keep it more neutral with the coppers in here as well. I thought this was just well curated and thought out. Even amounts of mattes, metallics, and shimmers. 
I mean, nostalgia and misbehave. I mean, easy. Misbehave for me. You know how I love my pinky mauve mattes, and I love that that shade is in here. Emerald Dream is a gorgeous, gorgeous shade. It's beautifully rich and shiny, can't get enough, and it's so easy to do. You got Moody to blend it out. Sandalwood is such a good setup shade. Is a great transition shade for any of the mattes in here, whether you want to pair it with a plum or more the rosy matte or more with the orange matte or more with this dirty mustard shade. Wild Soul, love. Love this shade. It's like, hello, one of the best palettes in 2019 from ColourPop. Out of all the palettes they released, because there were a lot, I thought this would stand out for me. Just the different colors you have in here, the different textures and the quality, can't go wrong. Colored Rain. When this palette dropped, friends, I was not ready. I was not ready for Safari Rain. I don't know if this palette had a new formula. The creaminess of it all. I mean, Toucan, like, come on. The shine on that is amazing. Lioness is almost so creamy that you, you have to like press the pigments in. Look at that. Look at that shine. It is insane. And the mattes, Color Rain, for me, out of the indie category, makes one of the best formulated mattes. The best formulated matte. You can't go wrong. They're so easy to blend. They're so color rich. Look at that. Look at that olive. Jungle, are you kidding me? With that olive shade? Please, I love this color story. It's earthy, it has your greens, it has your, your oranges and your coppers, I get it. We've seen these shades before, but Colored Rain delivers in the eyeshadow category of things. I feel, especially their metallics, their melted metallics, I think is what they call the formula in here. Outstandingly beautiful. This shade, Green Valley, please. This shiny olive, oh my goodness me. Like, love, 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 love. and. Why I took a break from ColourPop and a lot of eyeshadow palettes in general because I want to keep using this again and again and again. Like, I want to dip back in. Maybe we'll do another three look video. All the palettes that I'm talking about here, friends, I have a video on. So I will try to link all those below with the said time stamp. So if you want to see those palettes in actions, you can. Next up, we have Dominique Cosmetics. I think. Berries and cream for me. I didn't try like her little winter mini eyeshadow palette. I didn't get Celestial Storm. I do have the Latte palette as well as Rustic Glam. I do like Rustic Glam. I do. I thought that was a very interesting color story. I thought the shades paired well. You mostly had a matte shade matching up with the similar shimmer metallic shade. This for me like the taupey mauve magenta thing oh my goodness the weak link was definitely blueberry muffin i wanted a little more from blueberry muffin and i would have been okay if she would have made this more like another plummy type of something i know there's a lot of plum in here but if you would have taken this out oh my goodness that's such a pretty palette it's just kind of hard to place it with the other shades i know i'm considering this a top favorite for 2019 but when you have shades like Toasted and Soft and Sweet, Toasted, the taupe I never, no room, the taupe I never knew I needed. I love that shade. And just the different plums and magentas in here and you have, of course, your warm brown. I don't know, there's something about this palette that I love the looks I created, whether they were very smoky or just kind of daily friendly. I love the tones in Berries and Cream. I think she did a phenomenal job in coming up with the shades and not just the color, but the tone of them as well when you layer them together. It's so nice to create a smoky eye that's plum. I love plum smoky eyes. I just think they're so... There's something about them that is not typical smoky. It just adds a little more character to the look, which I feel is so important nowadays when you're being a little more creative with your smoky eye to kind of steer away from typical neutral brown or even black. The plum, the plums and the mauves, they get me every time. Now we're going more into the higher end of things. I definitely have to give it to Viseart. Their neutral mattes, they'll mill their milieu i also mentioned the dark edit palette which is in my best of 2019 general video that i did in collaboration with kate the great if you haven't checked that out 
I'll link it down below for your convenience. This palette, oh my goodness. First of all, this is a pro palette, so the frame is magnetic. The frame grooves will make it very easy to pop these single shades out if you wanted to mix and match if you happen to have other Viseart palettes. These colors are so beautifully rich and they show true from pan to eye. You take this navy, this is gonna show up navy on you, friend. It's gonna show up navy. You take this magenta, please. It's gonna show up magenta on your skin. And, and, if you mix it with any of these other more neutral shades, it's still gonna show up that color. It's not going to muddy up. And that is the magic behind Viseart shadows, which I try to keep explaining to people. It's not just about the pigmentation, it's how these shadows perform with one another. I'm sure you've run into mats where you, even if you follow the color theory rules, you start to layer them and they look crazy on your lid. It's because they're not great quality. The different types of tones present in milieu is I mean, you can go nuts. You can combine till your heart's content. You can come up with a slew of combinations and you'll never come up with the same eye look. So I definitely had to give it to the milieu as well. There's a lot of construction going on and it's driving me nuts. Definitely had to give it to Milieu for one of the standout palettes of the year. I have it over there. I'm just really lazy right now and I'm not gonna get up. The Viseart Grand Pro Editorial Brights number three. That palette I have a video on and that is a pro palette so I know it's not for everyone and that's why I didn't necessarily feature it in this video but I had to give it a mention because the amount of work they put in these pro palettes, I mean they release a year at a time which speaks volumes nowadays when palettes are being produced every two to three weeks. Viseart takes their time with their formulation. They make sure they get the color right for all skin tones. And no matter the skin tone that you are, these shades will show up as they do in pan. And that is so important to mention. And specifically, again, for Milieu, had to mention it in Best of 2019. I don't want to start any drama, but I didn't think it was right for Trend Mood to put Jackie Aina up against Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson as best collaboration of the year. I'm just saying, like, given the context of it all, why would you do that? I'm not going to go into it deeply, but we all know that was an unfair matchup. With all feelings aside, I just think this was a better curation of shades. You could feel how you want about Jackie Aina. I think she gets more hate than what she deserves but whatever. This is a beautifully curated palette. This was Jackie Ina's collaboration with ABH. I think one of the best collaborations of the year in terms of the palette design. I mean, this iridescent finish is just gorgeous. The colors involved here, you have, I think, a good amount of mattes and metallics. You have such a beautiful story with the purples, the pinks, the coppers, and the browns. Lituation. Such a beautiful silvery plum shade. Are you kidding me? Shookington, I love this purple. You can't go wrong. Hello, where are we gonna go? That is so pretty. I just love this palette so much. I think it looks good on an array of skin tones. Yes, it was specifically formulated for deeper skin tones to get that pigmentation that they don't have to keep digging their brush in the pan to get the color saturation that they are expecting. But people on the lighter part of the spectrum can benefit as well. You just use a lighter hand. So that's why I think this palette is so versatile, not only in terms of the color spectrum category, but just in terms of the shades in here, there's something for everyone I feel, which is why this had to be included in Best of 2019 for me. For me. Natasha Denona. Natasha came out with a few in 2019, but these two. Actually, I have three of her palettes. I do. Excuse me. I think the best mini, even with Mini Gold and the recently released Mini Glam, I think Mini Nude is her best mini palette out of the mini palette collection for Natasha Denona. This freaking palette, it's small. You don't get a lot for your money, but it is so versatile. I love this peachy shade is such a gorgeous transition that you could just rely on for an everyday kind of look. If you want more smoke, then you'll go into this reddish brown shade that I feel is just gorgeous. And the metallics in here are outstandingly beautiful. This is like a duochrome situation that I just, it's so pretty. 
And if you want to go regular bronze, it's more like a coppery type of bronze. The texture is immaculate. You can pair these textures with any of the mattes in here. And while I understand there are only five shades, they're just five easy shades to use. If you don't like dealing with 16 pan palettes, 24 pan palettes or whatever, you just have the five and it just streamlines your experience. You don't feel like you have to use all the shades at once. You can use one shade if you want. Oh my God, what, what a thought. And just have it be a little more edited in that respect. The next favorite for me from Natasha, without a doubt, without a doubt, has to be Biba. The Biba Neutral, mm, mm, mm. This was stand out for me because in addition to my other favorite, she has these cream to matte formulas that is, is very special to Natasha Denona where they blend out like skin. They're a little lighter in texture than her creamy matte formula. And what I feel that provides is an opportunity to use a shade in a way that you don't feel intimidated by. You don't feel like you're gonna apply too much or the blend is not gonna be great. These textures are so smooth and moussey and they're so easy to blend like look at that it just looks like your skin and with the other shades in here i just feel you just have a be just beautiful moments with neutral shades that are cool or red base or more neutral base or more coral base or peachy yes granted you only have three metallics in here but I think that forces you to use the matte as like a standout lick color instead that you don't necessarily have to rely on metallic to be placed on the lid. And you have the grays that I love. Tour is like the special cream to matte moussey texture is so beautiful. I love it that it's not flat gray, but there's a warmth to it. There's something in that shade that livens up your look as a little more dimension if you want to go strictly with the black and the gray shades it's going to have a little more punch to it i feel and last but not least last but not least Lila's my favorite palette of all time from natasha denona but in terms of what was released in 2019 i have i have to give it to sunrise this color story is not for everyone while i understand that i still think she did a phenomenal job with the choices that she included here. I mean, Aster, Aster is like a beautiful dual chrome purple situation that I feel, dare I say, it's an electron dupe for Pat's, it's in galactic gold, electrons in galactic gold, and Aster has like that periwinkle shift to it. So if you already have sunrise, then you're good. Carnelian is, oh my God, mac and cheese yellow, come on. Glory is a beautiful magenta shade. These shades together for me, I have to have it. I need to be included in this experience, okay? And then you have your other metallic shades that are just gorgeous. Azalea has a little more texture to it, but it's like a pinky copper situation that is so pretty. I love that shade. Then you have her more traditional metallic, the smooth metallic experience. These you could just blend out or wear as a standout lid color. The way these textures blend out like they were a matte, still beyond my comprehension, despite how many Natasha Denona shadows I have used, every time I use her traditional metallic formula, it's just such a pleasure, it's such a pleasure. And then of course her creamy mattes, you can't go wrong. They just look so beautiful with any of the shades you pair it with in this palette. I think she did a phenomenal job. Some people, this is a little too color rich and too colorful for them, and I get it. This little more of a specific color story than what you will find in Biba or her other palettes or her five pan palettes. This for me was a must. And I love the size. I love the size in comparison to her Biba size, which is how she was originally releasing her 15 pen palettes. It just allows for a consumer who is not familiar with Natasha Denona because the prices are intimidating. That 15 pen palette is 129. This was 65 and I feel a lot more doable, not only in price, but just in layout. I feel this is a lot more approachable in that the shades are not as big and you can kind of process it a little easier. Where was I going without mentioning this palette? Oh my goodness, shame on me. Obviously for Natasha, I had to, I had to, 
I know this was not a favorite for many, but let me tell you why is my favorite of 2019. The fact that she included so many of her cream to matte formula shades in this palette. This moussey texture again, it's just so, it's just so beautiful to use, so smooth, so skin-like in finish. I mean, you can't go wrong with one of these green pine shades in here as well. It's just so easy to use. I know it's not the best swatch. I'm just trying to find places on my arm to do this on. And then you have the crazy metallics in here, like this blue. It's just insane. Are you kidding me? Come on. I love it. It's so beautiful to use. People see this palette and they're like, what the hell is she doing? Like all the palettes I just showed from Natasha Denona in this video, she creates it like a matrix. You can create any look given a diagonal, a quad, a column or a row. You could dissect it how any way you can or want and you will get an eye look. I think that challenges the user's creativity. I just feel it allows them to think out of their box. If they usually rely only on one technique or certain shades, it forces them to say, hey, maybe I could use the blue with this color and I wouldn't have done or thought about doing that before. You have beautiful tones in here. I think that this is a very comprehensive color story. I don't think it's a pop of blue with neutrals. I wouldn't consider these neutrals. I would consider these very fiery orangey red shades. You still have your neutrals here, but you have a nice dose of olives or like taupey shades here on this corner. And then you got your blues and your greens. And then you have your more traditional neutrals here, the peachier, warmer browns. I love Metropolis. I think she did a phenomenal job. I love that it's smaller than her original 28 pan 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 pan. Her 28 pan pan is cheaper as well those suckers are like 239 this I believe was like 120 something I forgot but not 239 that's my point and still you get 28 shades so hopefully we could see more of that from her in the new year even though I'm slowing down my spending there are some brands like Natasha Pat and Viziar that I would not buy from other brands just to save my money for their releases I know some of you have mentioned that I should do more drugstore I will find my favorite drugstore palettes but for now and for spending I'm saving my money for Natasha and Pat. Charlotte Silberry. I don't have all of Charlotte's quads. I did pick up a few items throughout the year, but the standout eyeshadow palette for me from Charlotte has to be, without a doubt, the Icon palette. And I was so happy to see that this was put on sale during her Black Friday and Cyber Monday events. This is a phenomenal palette. She has textures that remind me of a Natasha Denona cream to matte formula that's very skin-like in texture so easy to blend so easy to apply so between the two of these you have that matte satin type of formula that you compare any of these with now i will say that charlotte is not the best in the long lasting department these shades although beautiful i feel you need to reinforce them with like a cream shadow just to make sure they don't fade quickly throughout the day. But once you do, you're good to go. These are so smooth and they have like shimmer in it, but it's not your typical shimmer texture. It's a lot smoother. I feel it's a lot more elegant in application. These shades we've seen before, these are typical Charlotte Tilbury. You know she has like a pillow talk type of pinks that she loves to include in all her palettes. But I love that she included the green and the blue. I know, it's like the neutral with the pop of color. This is totally that palette. But because the textures are so beautifully formulated and I feel they just pair gorgeously together that I forgive, I forgive that. I forgive you, Charlotte, <laughs> for many things. I think this is a beautiful, like, tealy, piney green. This blue has really nice depth to it. But the rose golds in here as well, they're just gorgeous to have and to be included in this palette. So stand out for me, I love the size of it. It's lightweight, I love the design, pretty neat. It has a mirror in here. For me, one of her best palettes in 2019, if not the best for me. People are mad at Pat, but this didn't release during the whole thing about the whatever, whatever. So I present to you my favorite palette from Pat in 2019. I know people are like, Midnight Sun, are you kidding me? Midnight Sun for me was, <sighs> how do I explain? Was the palette for me that I really felt like the Midnight Sun 
inspiration just connected so well to this palette's color story. Usually she shows like different images, videos, posters of whatever palette she is soon releasing. The images of Midnight Sun are just so visceral and it has so much texture and it just invokes something in me. I don't know how to explain. But when I saw these shades and you think about Midnight Sun, it's like, oh, the best. It's the best. Blitz Violet Orchid. Blitz Violet Orchid for me was the one of the standout colors of the year, period. It's so pretty. I love this shade. I love the fact that it's lavender periwinkle periwinkle. I love the fact that it's periwinkle violet and it stays like that when you apply it on your lid. Astral Solstice. Astral Solstice is just a phenomenal, phenomenal. I know it's very glittery and textury, but please, please, when you put that on your lid, forget it. The people aren't ready. My favorite, favorite shade out of the whole palette has to be Wicked Envy. This freaking shade, first of all, so creamy and textured. Look at the depth of that olive. Look at that. Come on. Are you serious? Oh my gosh. That is just so beautifully creamy. And just look at the tone. The tone is what kills me. The tone of this olive is unlike anything I have ever encountered or have in my collection. And it has gold glitters in there that are just so finely milled. And when you shine a whatever flashlight or dim light, whatever, the twinkle. The twinkle of it all. Taboo? Taboo is a beautiful freaking matte. One of my favorite mattes besides Tranquility from Golden Opulent. <laughs> this shade of a matte is so gorgeously perfect. It's like the perfect transition shade. I love it. And Extreme Dust, I know it looks like a light black, but it's like a beautifully toned charcoal. Oh my God. Need I go on? Need I go on? I know people loved Bronze Seduction. I love Bronze Seduction myself. Fire Opal, forget it. But I love this. I love this. I love it so much. Now, her holiday quads are also one of my favorites of the year, but I know those are not permanent, so neither is the Charlotte Tilbury Icon palette, but, but if I wanted to quickly mention those, definitely Iconic Illumination and Nocturnal Nirvana are my favorites out of the three. That Bordeaux shade, Blitz Bordeaux, and the purple shade, not only the purple shade, but for that turquoise lime shifty shade in Nocturnal Nirvana. Please, are you kidding me? Those, my friends, are my standout eyeshadow palettes of 2019. And it was hard because I have a lot of favorites. I could easily find a reason to like any palette in my collection. But for me, these choices were just ones that always exceeded my expectations. Every time I pop into the palette, I just feel there's like a joy and delight that I feel cannot be replicated with other palettes in my collection in terms of how I get excited about the color story and the texture these shadows have and how easy they are to work with and how it inspires more creativity and, and how they just make me want to apply them right that is like you can't explain why you love this so much but you have to slap it on your eyes you just have to slap it on real fast those are my favorites friends let me know what your favorites have been in 2019 I think I might do a best of 2019 cheek product video that might be coming later on in January just because I'm going to see Maddie soon and I don't necessarily want to bring all of my favorite cheek products with me to her house so it might be a little delayed but I'm still thinking about doing it as well as complexion as well <laughs> we'll see but I definitely wanted to get the eyeshadow palette video out and with that said friends it is a wrap thank you all so much for watching I hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another review tutorial demo or get ready with me take care and i'll see you again soon